A very, 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 very good afternoon. Indeed, it's a very good afternoon. We've been having a lively chat back off, back, back the scenes, and we forgot about the time. Our apologies for that, but we are ready and good to go. This is the NSSF Financial Literacy Program, and this is the hour. These are the two hours when we convene and go back to school, and we say we are in the school of money. For the next two hours, we we get down as students, we, we, we forget our titles, we forget who we are, we forget what our job roles are, and we say, let's discuss money as individuals. It is personal and it is personal. I am privileged to be the headmaster of this school, the school of money, for these next two hours, and I have briefed my panelists to kindly and uh, by force address me as Mr. Headmaster Sir, but also not to forget they will add on a Sir before the Mr. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for joining us. As as has been and will be, we shall always try to get that topic that we feel that we need to discuss in the money world. Have this money conversation with ourselves to trigger the to trigger the thinking. Ours is to bring in awareness. Yours is to do the action. As if if the live stream uh, team is kind enough to display our screen, my screen, you will see that growing up is optional but growing old is mandatory today we are here to talk about retirement retirement when we talk about retirement everyone thinks about the old people no one ever thinks about the grown-ups not everyone that has grown old has actually grown up they could have grown old but they are still doing the things of the young children they're still begging you will find a 60 year old man begging for something to eat just like a 10 year old they have grown old but they have not grown up it is my prayer that today you get into the spirit of growing up if the live screen team is kind enough to display those slides i want to share with you some information here and our focus here is on talking to you while you are before you get into employment while you are in employment and after you get out of employment. As NSSF, we feel we are of purpose to you if we can prepare you before you are in employment. If we can continue preparing you while you are in employment. And then you sustain yourself after employment. Ladies and gentlemen, it has been seen and we, we, it continues to be seen that people are living longer than they, they wish after retirement. You will call for death to take care, but it will not take care away. So you may be planning for living for one year, but then you'll be given another good 20 years. How are you going to live without an income? Today we are going to talk about those habits that defend retirement. How do you retire and you are in a great, great shape? I don't know if I'm able to see, you see my slides, but that is exactly... I want to give you a few numbers here. In a country... I'm picking from you the last Ubos figure of 42.7 million people. Only 17, that's labor force is about 17 million. But of the 17 million, only 12% have someone who looks at their retirement. Someone who is mandated, someone who whose job is to look at their retirement. Those are people working in the uh, in the corporate world where they subscribe to NSSF, people working in the in the gov in, with government, UPDF and and the police with those people someone is looking at their retirement of those same people retirement planning only 52 percent have considered this is uh, basing on the on the last financial capability report only 52 percent are thinking about their retirement thinking some of them, the other 40, 47% thinks retirement won't come, but it will come. Ladies and gentlemen, when you enter that job, the first thing you need to understand is you are going to leave that job. However much you are, you are good at that job, you will have to leave it. And you have to prepare for that place when you leave. At NSSF, I was asked a, a, a question before here, we got on, on air. We pay out $60 billion every month, on average, $60 billion every month to about 2,000 people. I have a difficult time justifying this figure because people ask me, where is that money? You are lying. That money, you are, not, you, are, you are not paying that money. And of course, why I'm having a difficult time is because when that money gets into the hands of those people, there is nothing to show for it. There is nothing they have to show. Because 56% of them, another 
from something from Finscope tells us that 56% of them go to a household member. They go to a house uh, to, to, a, to a relative and ask them, what can I do with my kamani? I have received my kamani. What do I do with it? And that person will tell you things according to how they have seen the world. They will tell you, go to passion fruit farming. But is it the best thing for you? It may be the best thing for your neighbor or for you, that person, but is it the best thing for you? So we have found out that only 5% of the people in retirement are actually financially independent. Now, you work for 30 years and immediately in your third year, is your first year of retirement, you are not financially, you are financially dependent on people younger than you. It is a sad story and we do not want to have that. So, Ladies and gentlemen, today, today as we get into this discussion, of course I have not been in retirement myself, I cannot start perpetuating that I know all these things. We are going to talk, ask the people who have been there, the people who are near there, and the person who will be asking them is nowhere near there. And we shall be talking, asking ourselves, who am I, where am I, and where am I going when it comes to retirement planning. But before we do that, we we'll need to know who you are. So if the back office team is kind enough to please share with us that poll question. We need to understand who are you, what are you, and what's your age, what's your gender, what's your employment status. Why we do this is we need the people here, the panelists today to customize their presentations to you and want you to rate your proficiency of using these digital tools uh, because we are getting to you on through a digital tool we also need to understand this for our later later uh our later uh, um, endeavors just to understand how best we can get to you so who are you are you male are you female are you 20 30 are you 40 are you 50 are you self-employed are you unemployed and what's your digital tool uh, usage and we shall stop that poll in the next two seconds two three four okay and let us see ladies and gentlemen my esteemed panel today the people are going to talk about the majority are between 30 years to 40 years and that is the right population there is another 26 percent between 40 to 50 and another 17 percent above 50. when you talk about when it comes to gender the gentlemen when it comes to money conversations of money usually the gentlemen are early for these conversations but the females are also in here we have 46 percent of us as female and 54 percent as males on the employment status, 84% of these people are in formal employment. 5% are business owners. 5% uh, are self-employed. And 7% are unemployed. Thank you so much. So as we start this discussion, those are the people that are listening to us and more joining. So <coughs> allow me to stop here and inviting the panel for that day we have a distinguished a, a, a very very esteemed panel of members here to discuss retirement planning as i as i mentioned brian mulondo so many years away from retirement but he's doing something about his retirement and i hope it is not just the children today he's here to tell us what but as he tells us he's going to lead us through Get another uh, talk talk through to the, with this panel a, a panel of good of uh, good people that have been in this field on how where and when they started this journey. So Brian, you will start with after the introductions. You will start with your own status. Where are you? Who are you in this? <laughs> When it comes to this bit of retirement planning, oh, you are going to work for life. <laughs> Thank you so much. How about you, Brian? Thank you very much, uh, <laughs> Apollo. I think the studio audience can clap for Apollo, just uh, just uh, to give him vibe. Eh? Yeah, headmaster, 
uh, teacher Apollo. Thank you so much. For the rest of you who are joining us, thank you so much for taking off your time. Uh, we know some of you are even listening in while you're doing, you know, you're, you're, you're hustling away. We appreciate your company. Today, we are talking the most important things at the end of your work life, right? In fact, one of my uh, mentors told me that the day you join a workplace, that's the same day you should start planning your exit. And it's the same theory we apply to the rest of our lives. At one point, like Apollo said, you're going to have to retire. But the question is not when to retire, it's how to retire. And today on the show, we're going to uh, talk to two eminent people who have, uh, one is retired, one is threatening to retire. <laughs> And uh, they joined me today. First, a distinguished teacher who has lived for teaching, started as, you know, a normal teacher, went, became a head teacher. She became a teacher of teachers, an education consultant. And today she joins us, Mrs. Margaret Atim. Welcome. Also joining me is an uh, economist, and uh, uh, someone here confessed that when they were in school, they looked up to him uh, and uh, they, he taught them, I think gave them a few retakes, but uh, see where we are today. Dr. Fred Muhumza, welcome. Um, I want to request you, if you have any question about the things that we're talking about today, please uh, put it in the chat, all right? We'll be able to pick up those questions and share with our panelists if you also need to share this link do it let us do it now facebook twitter okay on facebook if you're able to go to facebook and use it by mistake i don't know what you use to reach facebook but share share the the link uh even in your whatsapp groups at your workplace now uganda public service places the age of retirement at 60 but as we've seen in the news recently, not everyone wanted to retire. Could it be because they have no plan for that time? Those are some of the issues that we're going to cover today. Let me start with uh, you, Mrs. Atim. You are a teacher. Uh, first, walk, through us, uh, walk us through the, the journey of you being a teacher up to the point where you said, okay, I'm done. Uh, I've retired. Thank you very much, Brian, my son. You know, my judge. <laughs> so, uh, I'm a professional teacher, retired eight years ago mm. from uh, government. That means I'm 68. Because the mandatory retirement is 60. 60. Mm. And uh, the eight years, my eight years of retirement have been the most beautiful years. Really? Those of you who are nearing 59, 60, just rejoice. <laughs> I would like to take uh, this opportunity to congratulate the outgoing head teacher of Tororo Girls who is retiring today. Congratulations. Really? And come to our ward of retirement where there's no stress. <laughs> now, part, <laughs> part of my background, I've said already that I'm a teacher, a science teacher at that. Mm. So I think I'm a friend of the president of Uganda. <laughs> <laughs> and I teach biology, okay. the science of life. Mm. So I taught in the Mount St. Mary's Namagunga for 20 years. I did, went through the ladders of classroom teacher. From there, I went to a training of two years at the Means of Education, where I was working at a project as a science inspector. And from there, I had enough uh, knowledge to become a school administrator. And I was posted to Mary Hill High School. Five years as a deputy head teacher, ten years as a head teacher. Mm. And so I retired from Mary Hill High School uh, as a head teacher. Mm. Uh, I would like to say, since we are talking about preparation for retirement, one of the reasons why I, I, I endeavored to see that I retire as a head teacher mm. was part of planning for the, my retirement. Mm. Because I, I happened to get to know that uh, the level at which you retire 
public service that's now we are referring to uh, Uga, I mean, uh, Uganda government. Yeah. They calculate your retirement benefits from at the level, uh, okay, the salary level, the, that very salary you quit you are getting at that material time. Mm. You see where they calculate your benefits mm. from. So I said, oh, of course, salary increases with the, the different ladders. Mm. So I said, I must struggle and reach the top ladder of a teacher. And I thank God that I So that's, how you, that's why you worked that so hard one, to be a head teacher. One of the drives that I ended up being a head teacher. And I was quite happy as a head teacher. So at what age is that uh, when you are when, when a I, head teacher? When, when you're I, retiring I, as a head teacher? 60, the official retirement age. So you, you retired at Mary Hill at, at, at Mary, 60? At 60, sharp. Wow. Yes. Mm -hmm. the, I think you, we know all what retirement is about. In particular, if you refer to Uganda, if you have fed in your birthday, date properly hmm. that birthday date as you as you celebrate 60 years uh the computer also is celebrating or maybe missing you <laughs> by clicking and removing you from the payroll right automatic it's automatic yeah but uh i would like to say that if it is automatic and cuts you at 60 that's very good hmm. if you enter your birth age five years less you are disadvantaging yourself because me it means you retire much later when you still have when you have much less energy <laughs> and it may be less time to enjoy free time <laughs> so That's i would like to encourage the young ones understand some of our listeners maybe in the 20s 30s yeah as you get into the job of work i mean the place of work if, if you did the right full age mm. so that the computer <laughs> helps you to retire at the proper time when you still have the energy like me Munage, we feed in the wrong age because uh, we don't know what will happen. <laughs> so, so uh, I, 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 I thank you so much for that um, history. I want to turn to you, Dr. Fred, because Uganda is at 60%. But other countries, what are their practice, best practices? At what age do they recommend? Uh, could it be an opportunity for us to also say, yeah, but at 60, the person is too old. They can't buy a convertible, you know. Um, what do other countries do, especially in the region? Yeah, thank you very much. Quite a number of countries in our region are also at around 60. Mm. Uh, but beyond the region, countries respond to their population dynamics. So you have, like in Japan, they have actually been increasing the retirement age. Yeah. Because as you know, they have fewer children to work. And when you retire, it is those who are working who are actually going to be contrib contributing mm. to the equivalent of NSSF or pension, government pension, out of which you pay those who retired. Mm -hmm. Now you end up with a situation that there are more people who have retired and those guys live longer to their 80s and 90s. Yeah. And then you have fewer people supporting them by making those contributions. But also you begin to reach a level where, where do you get now? I mean, says a team here retires and you can't find a person to replace as head teacher. Yeah. So the countries like Japan and others have been actually increasing. The mm. retirement age so they can keep that quality they can keep that quality but also where do you get other people to come through because their populations really they don't have a youth biology like in our case yeah we you know we are broad based at the bottom mm -hmm. and for them they are narrow and you know kind, kind of that kind of thing so each country tries to address its unique conditions mm -hmm. but uh, the, the majority of uh, our peers would be in our same category right um uh, let me ask you uh mrs Zatim. a majority of people you know i i i don't want to say your generation but <laughs> I'm, I'm 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 a bit uh uh i don't have enough you know words to, to say but it looks like your generation are parents kept working until their last day and you will hear conversations of parents are now expecting their children to, to take care of them right uh was it a was it a, a a thing that was unheard of during the time to retire was it bad to to be had we even had a story recently of people who are you know struggling to change their debts with public service they've they've asked the man to go but he's saying no me i was born in 1970. <laughs> kume the man was born in in you know so what was the 
thinking in in your generation uh thank you brian mm. for that question mm. uh if i thinking back to my generation you know retirement and the age of retirement is just, it's just a face one of the faces of growth okay it's just like uh, a child growing up i mean it's from crawling to walking you see the in order for a child to walk properly or even to talk needs to be aided by those who have the experience in one way or the other mm. so from our time we don't know whether probably not well developed system or whatever i would to like to know the i mean i don't know exactly but the fact is that very little was talked about retirement very little and the time it was looked at as a time you are sent away from your work to go back home and die that was the that was what it and all view. of us know even a small child knows what this means yeah you would like to run to go to this yeah so that's how it was looked at so these people who struggle even to check that's why even in my introduction i was already uh, uh, advising the young ones now not to change their date uh it's <laughs> just because they are fearing now to retire to go home and die that was the attitude but i would like to thank the government mm. and right now i'm even thanking nsss i did even know that you had this beautiful program to aid the people whom you are serving in who whom you are keeping their savings to think about retirement yeah in a positive way as a phase of growth it's just part of growth just like as i i come from p7 and go to senior one i don't start getting worried that oh now next year i'll be in this one i don't have to be worried oh next year i'm going to university it's just a phase of growth right and uh, now generally talks about retirement education about retirement are so much on the move and i don't expect young ones like those ones who are in the 30s or even in 40s mm -hmm. to behave like us i don't think so right. because there's much more knowledge and we are ready to give more knowledge for us who have now got the experience mm -hmm. and so on right. so that's how it was i wouldn't blame so much the people who were like that and the uh, right within my time you know as i said i developed in my career up to the level of head teacher mm. when you when you re, when you reach head teacher level you start relating with those high level what uh, officials in the means of education right let alone of course for head teacher so it's one of the top ladders yes. within that line the ministry so of course being promoted to that level i found members fair colleagues now who are older than me who are maybe remaining two years or three years to retire and the whole move the whole air about retirement nobody could talk nobody could tell you i'm now 57 no it was like a taboo <laughs> wow nobody could tell you that i'm entering 50 it is a taboo no one was getting just, excited that fever that fear that oh i'm now nearing retirement mm -hmm. and for me i've told you i'm a scientist i think it was a stimulation you know a stimulus is something which uh, makes you to act yeah. to react in order to answer to that stimulus right it was a stimulus to me because uh they were the worst the, the best stimulus was one of my best head teachers a role model i was looking up up to retired and was quite a dynamic gentleman and mm. very okay and i was really looking up to him after within two years i was still there as a head teacher he was within the akore region we are told the man has died i said oh my god is that what it means by retirement it really triggered me i said with my science mm -hmm. and my management uh, skills and so on mm -hmm. i must find out more what retirement is and in, 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 with through intuition within me i just felt retirement is just a smooth way of moving from one state to the other just like how i get the job eventually i hand it over to somebody else and i move on to the next one to the next one mm. then i started through of course a wider reading about it wider sharing about it and changing my attitude towards retirement i said if people are dying after two years of retirement me i'm not going to do so yeah and i even told my god and he answered because now i'm eight years into retirement mm -hmm. and i don't think i'm yet to die <laughs> <laughs> so good <laughs> and you look like you're enjoying it <laughs> Look like yes, you're enjoying I'm your retirement. So yeah. That's why I'm very happy. I'm very sure I'm not yet to die. Right. Within two years. But the good note is, 
there has there is now general reduction in the that uh, mortality, I would call it, mm. of uh, retirees where mm. they die within six months, within the one year, within the two years. I think it's a bit reduced. Right. And I would like to encourage those who have the the what the responsibility in the the who are in the seats of uh, uh, what educating and the sensitizing people about retirement to continue right. so that uh, retirement should not be a stage of mortality. Right. It be a stage of enjoyment. Of enjoyment and celebration. Yeah. If you're just joining us, your questions are welcome. Even now, do you know parents? Do you know colleagues who are struggling with understanding this concept of retirement? For you, does it mean that it's the end of the world for you? And do these notions perpetuate our, you know, uh, refusal to uh, plan for the future? Because, you, you know, you can't plan for the unknown, right? And so, uh, contribute to the conversation. You can also use uh, hashtag a better life, NSSF a better life tag, uh, us on those handles at NSSF, you, you will be able to look up some of those comments. Um, Dr. Muhumuza. Someone is watching and they are like, yeah, okay, it's good. I, okay, my, now I've changed my, the way I think about retirement. But is there that age, that golden age? You know, they've always released statistics about when you're 20, you must now start to think about this. When you're 30, when, at what age should I start thinking about retiring? And then what particular things? Should I be thinking about when it comes to investing? I, I know someone whose uh, uh, doctrine is I must be able to retire with the same amount of money or even more than what I'm living on now. So what, what also should inform uh, our ideas getting into retirement? Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Brian. I think it's a really valid question, but as they mentioned, the moment you get that job, you need to begin thinking of what will happen when I leave this job. Yeah. And that can also be your strategy of retirement. It's not that you leave that job to go to retire, mm -hmm. but it could also be your strategy to say, I want to leave this job, get into another job, get into as part of your retirement strategy mm. because you're already seeing this job i'm already a deputy managing director by the salary here even if i became a managing director it does not answer my retirement mm. question also is it possible for you to become managing director exactly <laughs> so you begin to look at those things and say where are the other options right i need to get into a job that gives me better pay to look after my needs now mm. but also have something to plan for the retirement so it's really from day one. Now, in economics, there is what we call the life cycle hypothesis. Before, be, between when you are conceived in your mother's womb, up to age 18 in the Ugandan law, you are really borrowing. In the womb, you are borrowing from your mother. Mm -hmm. Then you get born outside, you are borrowing from your mother's breast. Really, you are being fed. All your basic needs are being met by others. Yeah. Now, at 18, 20 there, we expect you to begin... Uh, crossing those lines that now your income is more than your expenditure and that is going to run up to about age 60 mm -hmm. for an official government retirement mm. so at that point you begin to say did I build enough in between age 20 and 60 one to pay back those you borrowed from before you were 20 mm -hmm. now you may not exactly be paying back your parents but also you need to look after them in their retirement yeah but also remember, you're also building your own children who are now borrowing on, from you. From you, yeah. So your cost of, uh, your expenditures have increased. To look after yourself, your children, and your other parents. But also you must save more. That's why we're saying, even in whatever work you do, you already don't want to live hand to mouth. Because then you're just balancing the boat. Mm -hmm. You want to say, even at age 25, at age 30, that is in your mind. You may not be able to make it, but it shouldn't leave your mind. Yeah. Because that is what will trigger you, as he said. It will stimulate you to say, if I continue like this for 10 years, would I not have lost some 10 years mm. in which I would have saved some 8 million or mm -hmm. 10 million? Mm. And I think that's part of the problem uh, quite a number of NSSF savers have. 
Yeah. They stick to a job and your job might be paying you 300,000. Now, 15% of that is very little money. Yeah. So a year would pass when all you are put into the NSSF is another 400,000. Meaning in 10 years you have only put there 4 million. Yeah. Is that good enough for you to have 10 years when you have only saved 10 million? Mm -hmm. It begins to speak to, even in planning your retirement, retirement should not be speaking to, I got an appointment letter and now the computer is signing me off. Uh -huh. What other side things are you doing besides the retirement? The, the job. The job that, the that job feeds that into. Do. Exactly. Yeah. Some of us are not going to retire because we do not have necessarily the formal jobs. Even if they are there, they, they are the side hustle. Yeah. The side hustle is the main highway. <laughs> the other job is actually the side hustle. Yes. So you're going to work up to there. But you're looking at those kinds of expectations to make sure you have planned well. Mm. So while I may be told you can have mid-term access, I'm even thinking, why don't I have an extra term delay? That even mm. when I qualify to pick my NSSF money, I will leave it here. Mm. Because I've already engaged other things. So I don't need to pick exactly, it. Exactly. So we're going to find a law that allows us for extended delay. <laughs> <laughs> now there is a midterm access. Mm. They give me a mid, an extended delay. That even at, eight, at 68, I can still be a member of NSSF. And there is that voluntary arrangement. Yeah, yes. Mm. So people need to be thinking like that. Because you are going to live longer. <laughs> and that also comes with hassles. The things, as you said, where do you want to invest? You want to invest in areas that will have less strain on you to manage them. Because that's not the time you say, I will wake up at 6 and you do. You can even commit and say, I'm going to wake up at 6. And before you know it, it's 9 and you're sitting in bed and you're like, ah. I've failed. I'm not going, I've failed. Yeah. But what is happening to the cows? Who is going to be milking them? Because that milk must hit the road by 7. Yeah. So either it is you. Or you have put measures in place right. of people who will manage yeah. that business, that investment. Mm. Now, that said, so you have structured your nature of business. That's why many people will do rentals. Because they are not going to require a lot of supervision until you realize you are, you are tenants need to be chased to pay you. Mm. But you also can find a situation, is this vulnerable? COVID really has shown us quite a number of interesting things. Mm. There are people who had invested in schools, in hotels... And they knew, man, me, I'm done. Even sorted. when I retire, I'm sorted out. There will always be children in this area to come to this school. Now, before you know it, the schools are closed. Or you don't have an alternative. So you want also to say, what might hit this investment I have done? Anything that is out there. So in deciding what nature of investment you want to do, they should be easier to manage, but also spread them out. So that if one is hit hard, there will still be another one. Mm -hmm. If that taxi you bought gets an accident and it is irrecoverable, what, what are you, you going to do? So all investments are vulnerable, which is why sometimes we say diversify. But the best investment you really, everybody must have is partnerships or friendships. At that age, you don't only need just money. You also need your peers to <laughs> chat with. Yeah. To remind yourselves of the days of Idi Amin when sugar was not there. <laughs> now people are quarreling the price of sugar and fuel is high. At the time it wasn't even there anyway. Now you want somebody to remember your Kaimba Akeda, you know? <laughs> the old moment. Just to keep your you soul you alive. You keep your soul alive. You keep drinking and connecting. It's not just about money. But even if you have the money, fine. Throw a party for us. You are 77. <laughs> Do a birthday. The birthday right. doesn't have to be only at 48. Yeah. The father is 78. He can also throw us one and we will enjoy it. <laughs> Especially those of us who are there. When the 27 men must yes. throw our bushes going to the bush. Yes. Those will be good moments. So make it lively. Mm. It's not just about money. It's about life. Mm -hmm. God has given you that life. Leave it. Leave to it. To the fullest. Right. Uh, I want to ask you. I, I want to ask uh, Mrs. Atim. But before I... Okay. Let me first ask Mrs. Atim. Uh, when are you doing a party for us? Because you seem to be enjoying your life. <laughs> but, uh, uh, you know, speaking to these eight years, how they've been, are there things you've even started to do that, you know, you failed to do while you were busy being a head teacher? Exactly. Now, for us who are in that this area of, of retirement, because every day 
we read about it, we have experience, people share. Actually, people have a lot of challenges in one or the other in retirement. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Uh, the, I, I started off by saying that uh, retirement is the, the best time uh, to enjoy life. He has actually uh, already also emphasized that. And it depends on how, first of all, attitude how you feel about it. But mm. I think attitude now is changing because there's a lot of sensitization. It may not be a problem anymore. Yeah. Secondly, he has already touched it, uh, being uh, diversify where you are putting your eggs. All it takes in retirement is a sure, you know, when you are working, there is that daily, in, almost daily, though they may give you at the end of the month, but there are some allowances, sitting allowances, meeting allowances, you know nowadays, that those all these small, small things. And we, be, we are so fully dependent on our employers, so dependent that we keep on complaining. Can you imagine for the whole, whole, whole month there has been no seminars or have no allowances or something? All types of <laughs> small, small companies. <laughs> now, one sitting of the challenges allowances. when you retire, yeah. since you have told me how it's my eight years, is becoming independent, financially independent. Mm -hmm. I'm no longer looking at somebody's. Mm -hmm. And I would like to add also at this point, maybe to also mention mm -hmm. that having retired at 60, you grow up to 70 or to even to 80, and God has given you that gift of years, and you are still heresy. You don't have to tire your younger son or daughter waiting, seated folded with folded arms, waiting for a piece of soap, because in the name of retirement. Mm -hmm. I hope that is going, and going very fast. What you do is assure daily cash flow. Even if it is one shilling, it is something ethering. And to cash make your flow. life daily cash flow. Mm -hmm. And daily cash flow, you can manage it only when you diversify your activities. This is a time when you have all the time to yourself. You have plenty of time. There is again a wrong conception whereby if I, if I would just go back eight years back, one of the staff, sorry to, of course I'm not quoting the name or what, but I still remember, who instead of being happy about me uh, be achieving 60 years, was simply seriously sympathizing. And we say, hmm. anyway, now you are going just, it's good you are a biologist, you are going just to sit and count, you sit count birds. <laughs> I will not forget that statement. Actually, mm. I started sensitizing that one straight away. That mm. Retirement, that's it, means sitting on your veranda to count birds. Yeah. Because I saw there was a shortcoming who was a gentleman of about 35 years. Yeah. I said, you are just 35. But don't think that's what the time it is. Because by the time I retired, I already had a changed attitude. Mm. Because of those shocks I had of friends dying like that. I said, no, I'm going to make sure I plan for my retirement well. Right. So how my diversification, I have personal projects at home. But these personal projects are not just one or two. Several, touch here, touch there, touch here, and so on. To the extent that even when the COVID was at its climax, one of the projects was still working, that is water supply. Mm -hmm. COVID or no COVID, you need water. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it looks a very simple activity, <laughs> but it brings you the 600 in a day to go, Daily buy, cash flow. To go and buy a, a sachet of salt. Right. Instead of expecting my son to bring me salt. Yeah. So diversification. I, I have diversified my income in such a way that right from the simple water line to supply the community of course one of the income is also having developed a retirement home that's the comfort if you have a retirement home then that is comfort number one mm -hmm. not remaining renting I have known of some people whom I have cancelled they will sort of try to talk to who are in the rental houses and they have nowhere to go. Yeah. They are nearing retirement. It's deadly. Yeah. It's what? Right. So I have diversified. I have poetry. 
I have much anyway. My my projects are all biological anyway. You are you are a scientist. I am a scientist. I'm a biologist. I am a life scientist. So I enjoy seeing things grow. Right. And uh, when we talk of projects, it's, it's, maybe if you have a very huge project like spear motors, where you say our uh, vehicles are non can <laughs> But if you have those small small projects, mm -hmm. it's good to diversify. Even these people at school school projects as you have said mm. even if it's a clinic for the case of medical people and so on don't rely on just on the clinic right don't rely on, on the school have something else you can have a school but you have a farm as well yeah uh, something right. like that yeah. so those people who had schools as uh, my colleague here has given the example but they had farms as well of which part of that farm was supplying their school but they that first that they still the farms continue whereby they still could get sell their food and they were not as bad off as someone who had got one. So anyway, by, back to your question <laughs> is I have diversified my domestic projects. I right. call them domestic. Right. We took what I call neutral neutral care products. Neutral I, care neutral products. Care. Nice. Because I sent on all those talk of poetry, talk of uh, what is this? Figari, mm. water supply, <laughs> vegetables, nice. right. talk of mushrooms when the COVID came and they were saying mushrooms have a vitamin K or something. You so are selling. Have, ah, I'm there. <laughs> Actually, mushrooms have now become this and people have got to know them and so yeah. diversify. That's I think awesome. this is not enough. I was in, in a public work for a whole 37 years. What was I doing there? Okay, I was serving. But at the same time, I was gaining knowledge. Yeah. And experience. So gaining knowledge and experience, the knowledge and experience I've gained, I'm using it mm -hmm. to still serve the government. Mm -hmm. So I still have activities within the civil society or the government. Yes. Where I go mentoring here, I go counseling here, I give, go giving talks, I am attached to this and that. I would like to mention so much in detail. Yeah. But sometimes you're still flash, active despite active getting out of yeah the knowledge i learned and the experience i have are making of it out there yeah you're now applying that i'm a biologist i'm also having my domestic work so i'm fully occupied right and not bored at all nice. when my children want to, to visit me they have i told them don't assume that because i'm retired i'm just at home you must ring first. <laughs> Call me in the busy. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. They think you're always at home and cheering. And now when they ring, they say, Mommy, now, today where are you? They, they have to make a schedule. Yeah, they have yes, to, I like to that. call me and I give them an appointment. So I want to take... That's how the time it is interesting. Make sure... Hey. Let me now talk to my fellow, those who are going to retirement. Uh -huh. Make sure that make you plan and you make use of your experience and knowledge for the 30 years you have been in public life. Now, this knowledge and experience, you are walking away with it. Mm. You are not leaving it to your employer. Make use of it while you are out there. In it's different yours. ways. Mm. In the communities, in the churches, everywhere you, you find occupation. Avoid loneliness. Avoid boredom. At the same time, domestic projects will be diversified. Don't just say, me, I will plant trees and fold my hands. Oh, me, I have my token. The wind will come and pull, pull all the matoke down. <laughs> what will happen next? Do something else, maybe Sukumam week in addition to matoke. Thank you very much. <laughs> you guys in the studio, can you clap? <laughs> you are just looking at me. Okay. <laughs> Uh, Let me take some questions. Um, Grace Zak, I hope this has answered your question. You asked which steps did Mrs. Atim take to save for her retirement? Which steps did she take? She looks so healthy and confident. I hope you've had. Oh, diversify, diversify, diversify. Yeah, I also want to be in a place where it's my children looking for me. Be busy <laughs> traveling the world, you know. That's, that's good. Dr. Muhumuza, Bernard Abuang asks, what do you think could be the effect of high dependency ratio of our population to retirement perception? High dependency. I think it's a very interesting question. Nati maybe will tell us how many children she's talking about. Because mm. um, the, the joy she has has <laughs> also to do with what backlog have you carried with you. Mm. And these are oh, the things we are saying. The habits. Backlog. 
that might actually derail us. Mm -hmm. If you are in the habit of littering children all over the village, then you are going to have a lot to pull along with you and they will pull you back. Unless if you are going to be an irresponsible, irresponsible parent yeah. and you just leave them out there. Mm -hmm. But even then you will never have good friends because your children are going to become thieves. And when you are grown old, oh, they will remember you produced thieves for the village. Mm -hmm. So you will have no friends for you. So some of the habits we carry along are very, very critical. Uh, you will meet people who will say, Brian, why don't you produce another, part, another child and another one? You can manage. But for you, you are looking at 80 years. You it's know not what about where you are. Abana ba katunda. Exactly. Abana ba. You're like, well, excuse me. We serve yes. the same God. <laughs> <laughs> and as I said, it is life cycle hypothesis. I might be well off at age 50 or at age 40. That does not mean I produce another five children. Yeah. Because I'm looking. The, once a child is born, they are not going to go away. So you are looking at what will be their impact on when I am 80. Are they going to impact me positively or negatively? Am I going to impact them positively or negatively? Those are some of the habits, really, that we need to bring into the equation. Now, we keep saying um, the Chinese are really well-off people. Remember, yeah. their policy was one child. Yes. So here you are with two parents, aged possibly 30, looking after one child, who is possibly 8 years. But remember, those parents aged 30 years each, their parents are aged 50. They are no longer looking at them, but all of them now want to come and look at this one grandchild. Mm. So the grandchild has four parents supporting them who are between age 30 to 60. Now, there they can actually save. And China's problem is too much saving. That's why they can afford to lend us. But for us here, you have one person looking after 17. So many, so many. Yeah. Mm. That drags you, that derails your retirement. Mm. And you want to be looking forward. I think at one point, people are looking at children as a source of labor. There was that kind of thinking in our yeah. history. So you produce as many, you have farm labor. Yeah. But remember, when you grow old, you will not have saved anything in front. And then you begin to partition your small piece of land amidst all these ten children. And each one ends up with one acre, an acre there. And there. So perpetuating poverty. Mm. So all you are leaving to the world is poverty. And so I think that lifestyle habits or health habits that, def uh, that we need to defend for early retirement, it includes that question that Bernard has raised. Do not have too many dependents. Right. Unfortunately, in our social networks, it's not just about your children. Even your brother's children, your cousin's children, your cousin themselves sometimes can become dependents on you. Mm. But we need to reach a level and say, where do you put the boundary? You cannot carry the entire clan. Mm. If I am going to support you, can it be only to some level and you also... And you take over. You take over, you put in an effort as well. Yeah. Don't put your child in Uganda Road um, and Kampala parents and all you have is one coffee tree and you are relying on... Uh, I have relatives, mm. they will support me, mm. my God. There is another school out there, Kewere Midday, you can come from there. Yeah. And the child can pass from. So there are kind of strategic issues that we really need to bring into the factor and factor into the, our planning and don't start planning late. Mm -hmm. Don't start planning late. Don't start planning. Don't say I'm 35, I'll start when I'm 50. Yeah, I Zatim. still have time. Mrs. Atim here won't be happy with you. Yes, <laughs> I still have time, so I'll start when I'm 50. No. You don't know if you'll reach 50. Uh, so, uh, th this, uh, Dr. Muhumza, uh, speak also into this. To Hyrule Richard is saying, recent BOU survey indicated that 50% of the workforce in Uganda earn less than 1.5 million. Mm -hmm. Actually, uh, they earn less than 1 million shillings. Yeah, the financial survey of Bank of Uganda. Yeah. Um, how possible are we able to prepare for re retirement with that kind of, of pay grade and with the recurrent financial <laughs> challenges we are, we are having? Someone recently baptized us. We are now in the Cassava Republic. The how, banana we have left yeah, how does someone prepare for retirement? Is it even possible? I think this is what really we have had a conversation of diversify. Do not diversify after retirement. Mm -hmm. Diversify even now. Do not just rely on the job that you do. And right now we are having technology really opening up spaces that you can still work after five. We have yeah. been trying to push government to change the laws of saying working hours are eight to five and in between you have a break for lunch. So you will be there for eight hours of a working day. Yeah. No, that is no more. 
Some of us begin work at 3 a.m. You serve the Australians who are awake by then. Yeah. Then the Ugandans wake up, you join them. Mm -hmm. Then when the Ugandans are going to sleep, you join the Americans because the sun has gone. So really your working hour is 18 hours a day. And you're not in an office. So while Uganda does a survey in Uganda and says you're only earning 1 million, they haven't done extended that survey to pick your job in Australia and your other job in the U.S. Plus your cabbages, right. your tomatoes, your other things. Motivation speaking, really, quite a number of things that are available, mm. and people need to look beyond. I signed a contract here, it is eight to five. Yeah, I will have seen footballers for people like footballers. The referees they will tell you this referee is actually a policeman, a doctor. This referee is a doctor, yeah. And man, when he goes to referee that game, he gets his ten thousand dollars yeah. for that 90 minutes. Yeah, so how do we begin to do those jigs that really will make sure the one million? Is what is your official pay but as i say that is the hassle yeah so my official pay is the hassle mm. because the other things i do dwarf the official pay yes so we need to get to those spaces of thinking and technology is giving us avenues yeah. start that mobile money link start that agent banking start be the one to coordinate i mean jumia people want food and then you know who cooks it why don't you become the Kayungizi and say, by the way, I gave you that wedding. Mm -hmm. How much did they pay? Two <laughs> percent is my Give commission. me my commission. I mean, you move on. Yeah. Yes. It's so funny. I, I, I want to read uh, something that I came across a couple of days ago uh, to just uh, for us to understand exactly uh, what doctor is saying. If you look at, for example, Apple. Um, okay, let's start with Uber. Uber doesn't own any cars right okay these days they are coming up with driverless cars so probably that technology they own uh but if you look at say airbnb they don't own homes until we we went to namuongo and we built airbnbs it's all people's you know in, uh, infrastructure people's assets and they've built a technology so great to make so much money across the entire world uh someone was also asking me Mulondo, how many things do you do the gig economy yeah so and i think actually uh, we build houses you have three four children yeah you want each one of them to have a room now within another short time the children have gone they need you to join b and b those yeah. rooms which were for children it now can be available for some tourist or whoever is passing by my village come and sleep comfortably all i need is some juice some bananas there for breakfast Bed and breakfast. Mm -hmm. It's part of my retirement package that I am planning. Mm -hmm. To say you guys sleep, but when you go, make an appointment when you are coming because yeah. I might have. I might have guests. <laughs> yeah, and the good thing with Airbnb, they pay before they come. So you are guaranteed of your money. Mr. Zatim, doctor talked about something called backlog. What backlog do you have? After 60, what did you come with? <laughs> Dependence, <laughs> what? You know, Jaja is the favorite of all of them. When we want to go out to party, we'll bring to you. The, and those are the things that really, even this, when you're like, ah, let me go back and work. This, yeah. It looks like so, these people are making me more tired. Yeah, thank you. Uh, backload, I'll just add on, but then go beyond to that and look more at the capital one needs for retirement. I think people who are listening to me might think, mm, get worried. The, the capital I'm talking about is not money, don't worry. But let me first talk about backload. Mm. The, one of the things which is common about you in terms of backload, when you are working, you have that comfort, and you forget that the comfort is not yours because you are borrowing it from your employer. For example, you have the office, you have the vehicle, probably you have the keys, you have the people you are sending, maybe office messenger. I'm talking of the middle middle class managers and the top. Uh, but even if you are at the lower level, still there's that quick you are actually borrowing from your employer other than and the other thing you have when you actually don't have. So the realization that you need to prepare yourself and get, as I, I think I've mentioned already, uh, a retirement home is very, very important. And that retirement home should be planned in such a way that it is uh, comfortable enough for yourself and not too big, like eight bedrooms. By the way, we talked of four. 
there are people who end up with eight bedrooms. Because the four would be for the children, the other one would be for my parents who are visiting me, the other one would be for visitors. Uh -huh. and, they, and you look at the building and say, what is this? <laughs> that becomes a backload in your life, in your retirement. Right. Because it becomes too much. Yeah. And he mentioned so about the children. I've always mentioned, uh, I've given myself a, a, what? an example, that by the time I was retiring, my last born was already working. And that last born who was already working is a medical doctor. So I think me learning to become a doctor is the long, one of the longest mm. processes of, of education. So by the time she started working, I, I mean she started working when I was still, when I was just what? The, I mean when I was still working, but almost retiring. So by the time I retired, there was no biological responsibility apart from what? Then there are, there are these other ones, the social aspects of Africa, the relatives and so on. You just have to play your cards and get to know how far you have to help. You have to to look at yourself in a situation in such a way that sincerely if I pick up this niece or nephew and I'm already 59, will I manage? Because hmm. that's very, me niece I'm picking up when I'm at 59, would it still look up to me to educate her or him up to university. That's mm -hmm. one of the backlogs. You can't what and so on. Yeah. So you just have to be wise and see how to shed off some of the responsibilities so that you don't have that backlog. But uh, in order to feel much better, some of us have backlogs in terms of health, in terms of physical fitness, yeah. in terms of lack of knowledge. That's what I'm meaning. Right. It is a backlog. Yeah. Because by the time I'm retiring, I already have a baggage of sicknesses. Mm -hmm. I already have diabetes, and I hear it is a cousin to pressure, and then it is an anti to arthritis. <laughs> 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 you go with all those relatives, <laughs> they are already bad. Right. And during your 30 years of work or 25 years of work, you have been inviting these people. Oh, okay, these relatives, the pressure, the diabetes. The arthritis. Those are the most common right. where we just generally invite them because of our way of living. Right. So what I was calling about the capital for retirement is one endeavor to see that you live in a healthy way. Healthy living. Mm -hmm. Healthy living means looking at listening to your body and also picking up the knowledge you have had from school knowing that balanced diet means A, B, C, D, mm -hmm. physical fitness, mm -hmm. and so on. Now, our young, in the, in the middle age especially, because we are busy sweating looking for, for uh, money. Yeah. Um, uh, what do we call it? I have a, a, a line in the day, or like a KO and all that. So we end up skipping lunches. We don't have breakfast because... Uh, traffic will, will catch me up. My, my wife or my AD will prepare me a dry cup of tea. We eat on the move. Of which I will not finish. Yeah. If, it, if there's a slice of bread or a slice of cassava, <laughs> <laughs> I will not manage to finish because I'm rushing to catch up with the, what? Yeah. With the traffic. I reach at the office. If that office is kind enough, if it is very kind, it may give you a cup of milk tea. If it is very kind. Mm. Most cases it's dry tea. Mm. If there's any <laughs> cup animate, it might be Kabaragara if I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> Sold by staff How, members. What nutrition <laughs> are you getting from there? Wow. I reach lunch, I don't have the money. Probably I go for just granites, this one's in such it. If your workplace is kind to, have to give you lunch. If your workplace is kind enough, to be maybe a plate of rice or yeah. a portion or whatever with right. beans, full stop. Yeah. But I'll eat it while standing because I'm going somewhere, I'm doing this and that. I'll eat, I'll it, not eat, not I'll eat it during a meeting. And it will be cold yeah. and I'll be meeting. Mm -hmm. So all that I'm building a backload of unhealthiness when I reach retirement is wow. when you now realize that, oh, now I'm feeling so fatigued. What is the problem? Then a, a medical person says, maybe test sugar uh, uh, i can't have sugar my I'm grandparents still never, no my hmm. relatives never had sugar problems eh? <laughs> the diabetes no 
the, uh, it is not the elder back to my grandparents or my what and so they never had because they had, they were living a healthy life they were active not seated in front of a computer from 7 a.m to 5 because that is the problem of arthritis the problem of diabetes that's the diabetes 2 diabetes 1 is inherited fine that's what they tell us diabetes 2 is as bad but when i sit in front and i don't do the exercise and all that and so on all that is the backload. So all this, as we talk to our future retirees, we need to alert them that living a healthy life is exactly is necessary, and health is one of the capitals we have to work with. Right to retire. into retirement. Then the other one is the social capital. We have already talked about it. Relating and your friends, sure yeah, and your friends, and so on. Uh, internet and with technology has helped us that we can reach friends and maintain them. Please uh, st stop tying sumbusas mm. uh, and saying, uh, some of us, it's a, a that of Nugu, of Ichivichi. <laughs> yeah? We don't want to talk to our friends, our colleagues. Why is this one married and I'm not yet married? No. It is you, each one of us. Why are they, they, they only promoting yeah, this why one? Why have they promoted only this one? Mm. Have working colleagues whom, whom you are friends with. Because the rating gives you a, a heresy, mental and spiritual what? Uh, capital for your retirement. Because you need to go into retirement when you are peace, at peace with, your, with the fellow human beings and so on. That's so, so interesting. Uh, so those are areas which we don't think Mm. They are necessary. We think in terms of money. Fine, money is also oh. necessary. So I say that of this, why I'm so joyful and all that. Uh -huh. I have actually started a group or a movement in Uganda uh -huh. to help the retirees and to help those who are going to retirement uh -huh. to see that capital in retirement is not only money. money. So we talk about other things and we alert people that, oh, even my health is part of capital. And I can manage it very well and at a retirement when I'm very healthy. I can tell you for sure, Mrs. Atim, uh, I think in Uganda the expression right now is awokubienyo. Okubienyo. Because, in fact, may I had suggested maybe Big Trill should play, should record another song called Meeting After Meeting. Ah, yeah. Meeting after meeting. We meet. People meet to even have a meeting. Yeah. yeah? And, and you, when you talk about lunch, I thought about my days and I'm like, oh my goodness. This is me they are talking about. We want to hear your thoughts if you're struggling. There are so many questions that we are going to answer. Dr. Muhumuza, in a few minutes, you'll also talk to us about um, uh, someone is asking, what are the possible investments people can do in their 20s? Someone is saying, Banange, how do I beat time? I'm in the 40s. I'm on the fourth floor. How do I get there? But I want to uh, turn to the headmaster. The headmaster, Sir. Uh, uh, Mr. Apollo Amboa, um, so far, what are you seeing from this? Because, you know, you also, uh, in your portfolio, you, you see, you talk to many people who are retiring, who are getting that money, yeah? More than 20,000. You just paid out to what? 28,000 people? Yep. Um, what are the things that you're seeing are, are, are big issues to address? And uh, also inform us about uh, the second poll that uh, before we get into uh, the second uh, session. Thank you so much, Brian. Thank you so much, everyone that is listening in. I, I should commend you, Brian, that you have attempted hey. to ask the headmaster, sir, in his own <laughs> class. You know those students who are Abaka Janja. <laughs> yes, Brian, you are one of them, but you are forgiven. One of the things, and getting, getting to your question is, as an SSF, we are dealing with the money. Here we get to pay out about 70 billion every every month right. to people who are qualifying to take their money. And most of them, when you look, have a look at them, when you go to the, our ground floor and then you, as you talk to them, they have all these beautiful programs in their heads. All of them, they have very, and they are very wise at that point because the money is going to come. <laughs> our polls have also shown that when we go back to them in two years, mm -hmm. they actually don't want to look at you. You are now the problem. You gave me the money. I was old. I was not thinking. I was, why did you even give me the money? You should have prepared me. 
and they have lost this money. It's it's a bad story. It's a really really bad story. You know you know what's funny, Apollo. Yeah. Sorry to cut you short. I think Doctor Fred Alia was talking about. We should find a law that, that limits people. If you don't come with a business plan, you don't get this money. But that may get into issues of human rights and. <laughs> you you like may that. need to find another. <laughs> another <laughs> yes. Yeah, because now you become the enemy for giving me a hundred million shillings in cash. Exactly. One of the things I need to tell you, Brian, and uh, people might find it odd, but this NSSF money sometimes kills the recipients. Mm -hmm. We have a case in in Mbale. When he came to the Mbale office, I made his application, and they are, we've made it so simple for you to get your money that within maximum of about 14 days, your money is on the account. Right. And it shocks that person. He was thinking maybe in three, three, four months they will have paid me. He gets a message, and he gets disturbed. Now, there's a gentleman who got his money in Mbale and stayed in the town, drunk, 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 and died. Yes died like within a span of a week are you serious yes now going to your question what is it and the thing here is and i want to bring it back to i want to tell these people and we've been saying this as nssf it's not about money yeah it is not about money it is the habits if you do not work on the habits why we're having this is we are appealing to some people's habits because the habit of losing money starts when you before even you start working You've been in the habit every time you've been getting a paycheck. Paycheck. I want you to visualize this and then I'll get to the to our poll question. What you send at NSSF is 5%. Ask yourself if you are still energetic, young, and with educated with all these brains while you are still young. Why is it that only 5% of your income becomes the biggest paycheck in your life? What has happened to the 95%? Of course, taxes happen and everything, but why is it that 5% plus another 10% which is gotten from your employer becomes the biggest check in your life? That is because when I receive my 95% and government takes away its 35%, the 65% I am, I am left with, I will fight to finish it. And I will only settle until it is done. I will eat this money and when it is done, I can settle and now start working and then wait for the next paycheck. The habit of losing money is a daily thing. So NSSF money, when it comes, just expounds it. Because you are in the habit of losing money every month, when NSSF money comes in, you also get back to the habit. Why are we doing this? And we are saying this conversation is actually more important to people who are below 20. Because we are telling you right now that you have 30 years to retire. Start planning for them. As we are picking up from Mrs. Atim here, and she, Mrs. Atim, sorry, we are seeing a cool judger. I mean, picture your 30 years, Brian, from now. You're a cool person. Mm -hmm. Cool. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're called for webinars. There are so many people of uh, our age, they are not being called for webinars. When we looked at this, they could not qualify. But in her retirement, she's a cool judger. That is the type of life you're looking at. And that begins with your habits. Right. But then anyway, we'll talk and talk more about that. If the back office team could raise our second poll, there's quite a, 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 a number of, 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 of comments coming in through. Uh, Moses said, I think, I, I think he's below 20 or, or below 30. He has said he has to get married to someone from Mary Hill. <laughs> I don't know whether you instilled your thinking in the Mary Hill ladies, but uh, now, because of that, some people, they are now on market. Yes, our second question is about retirement. How are you planning for your retirement? Are you planning for your retirement? We are asking. Are you planning? And the answers are yes or no. Maybe I'm planning and I, uh, the other one is I don't know. Then another one is I am here to learn about planning for it. Uh, number two, where will your retirement income come from? NSSF, other savings, my children. My business, my education, I will continue to work. Ladies and gentlemen, let's take off two thirty seconds to just address this and we understand we need to give perspective to these wonderful panelists of, of, of our panelists to understand who are you and what you are doing about your retirement. As we finish this poll, 
uh someone also commented and i say i want to move away from the cassava economy and i get into i am the busy in retirement economy you call me i am busy don't uh, you want to come home i am busy yeah. <laughs> all right the results are here and uh, 73 percent of the people <coughs> are planning for retirement 73 percent of the people in here uh, on this call are planning for retirement one percent say they are not planning for retirement five percent say maybe another one percent says they don't know if they are planning for retirement mm. And another uh, about 21% say they are here to learn how to plan for retirement. Thank you so much. And we are asking them again, where will your retirement income come from? Because the majority have said they are already doing that. 61% say it's going to come from NSSF. 66% say it will come from... No, this is by popularity, so we are not adding. So the majority of the... It was multiple people could answer twice uh, any of the options. Mm. So the most popular is coming from their retirement income is going to come from other incomes, other so other savings. Then next popular was NSSF. About sixty one percent of the people here say they will get their money from NSSF. From their businesses, about forty seven percent. From those who plan to continue working, no retirement. Uh, team Dr. Muhumuza here is 13 percent. Teri kuzikiza. Teri kuzikiza. <laughs> and then there is a two percent that says they will get it from their children. I want to sign out with this. To those who are saying they will get it from their children, and I will just leave this analogy. Maybe Brian will answer it. Is the one here, Brian? When they call you and they tell you because for us you always have a parent. Even when your yeah. own parents die, you always have some parent. So they call you and tell you your parent has a, uh, fractured his leg pulling down coffee mm -hmm. then they tell you your son has also fractured his leg you know how problems comes come in pairs eh? mm -hmm. he has fractured his leg while he was riding a bicycle who are you going to take to hospital first ah my child exactly sure so uh, the way your child you are thinking about your children the same way your children will think about their children yeah your children are not your retirement brian back to you wow awesome quite a wake-up call for some of us here and and that's why we're always told uh, nurture the relationship with your partner because your children also go and move on right they'll move on I, I, I want to speak into this poll Dr. Fred um, people are, are talking about picking their the, the retirement scheme for NSSF Retirement is coming from other savings. Uh, retirement is coming from my business. Take us back, for example, to 1979 at your father's farm. Something that happened to you that also, despite being in retirement, you can literally get out of retirement. Yes. You understand what I'm saying? You could be forced out of retirement and and those things that people should be worried about even if they get to retirement yeah i think it's good to hear the way people are thinking and uh, of course you have people like teachers and others who are literally on government pension so for them nssf is not a source yeah but of course this was promoting nssf so i can imagine the client who are with us but maybe we need to also do a survey on the other side yeah uh, to inform the discussion broader than the NSSF employees, uh, uh, people who are within uh, the NSSF uh, fraternity. I was reading a survey where Americans actually asked people, would you like to design a mid-term access? Now the argument was, if you allow people to have a mid-term access, then they will save more. Knowing that any time I need it, I can access it. I can it. get it. Now, only 36% of Americans believed that. The other 64% said, no, we don't even dare allow us to do our midterm to get access. It. Mm. But that's the conversation you're hearing there because people have already other sources they are putting mm. out there. They are fine. So if I need money to recover and from anything or to deal with any crisis, I don't want to touch my NSSF. Right. Because I've already set up remedial measures. Mm -hmm. But anything can also happen to those remedial measures. 1979-1980, my father has over 80 heads of cattle. 
would go looking after them and they would disappear as small boys so they would end up in people's gardens. And then all of a sudden we get an Akari side, we are not used to. We used to mix six parts in 20 liters. So this Akari side was supposed to be shared and somebody, you go with a bottle and they put in for you. Remember the instructions of how to use it have remained with the other guy with a bottle. So you have come with a beer bottle with the Akari side and use the same thing. We lost all the cows in two weeks. So what do you do? That was his plan. He was still working and energetic somehow. But already the big family were nine were really dragging him down. Yeah. He couldn't with a salary of teachers at the time. Yeah. And he was an education officer, it wasn't that much. So these are things you want to plan uh with a background mind uh, about and you've said your spouse, your partner is very critical. I was looking at things that may actually shock you when you are in retirement. You can actually lose your spouse. You planned for 60 years, you have both retired, things are going on well, you go and hustle, you bring things home, the wife is the one running possibly the business for you as a man you are hustling, or the wife is the one hustling and bringing things, you are managing your poultry projects and everything, and then one of you dies. How do you move out there? Yeah. So you need to have those contingent plans. You may not all of you die, but the business can die out, as we have said. How do you move on? We have even seen people divorce after 70. Yeah. So what happens when you are enjoying your retirement and the other spouse says, you know what, let's end this thing. We have been together for 45 years. Thank you very much. Since, since you are now retired, it's I'm, okay. I'm taking my room. Let us retire. But, but these, are the things <laughs> That's true. these are the things she's really saying, uh, Mrs. Atim, mm. investing in the social networks. Yeah. Don't just plan for the man and the projects I will do. Are you happy with your spouse walking each other into 90 years yeah. and you're still together? If you have not invested in that spouse, you, you see the retirement may be disrupted. Yeah. And then you will be called out of retirement to begin saying, guys, can you give me some kajob here, even if it is really, and you are really looking for it as survival. Yeah. You want to look at it like Mrs. Zatima has told us. People may call me to come and say, come and speak to these head teachers. Yeah. I know you're not going there because you must earn a living from there. Mm. But it's part of the network and you also want to share, to serve yeah. the nation. You have knowledge to The give. head teachers of today have not groomed like she was. So you really feel you can give them something. The other day I was shocked to go to a school and we were trying to inspect value for money. Mm -hmm. And I go to this school and the teacher had ticked present, present, all the children up to Friday. But it was still Monday. <laughs> <laughs> oh, your <mukou. laughs> Does this one know the, the the meaning of this register? Wow. So he said, what if one of these children gets lost on Wednesday? And there will be evidence the child was in this school. <laughs> because police would come and say, but this child was here, begin to explain <laughs> to us. They didn't know the reason for the register. But also there is more. If a child hasn't come for four days, as a teacher you can ask in that class, does anybody know why Miriam is not here? Mm. Now today, because we have deviated from the real norms and traditions of teaching, you hear after people have sat P7, that you see there were a girl child who dropped out. They got married. But there was roll call every day. There was no tracker. Who could know? Who, yeah. Why didn't we track at that point? Yeah. To say this has happened. So Mrs. Atimia can be called to come and speak to the head teachers and the teachers of today. This is not to mean she has gone out of retirement. She's doing yeah. her part of the fun. Yeah. But you want to avoid that situation. Where you begin now to look for those who hustle. Yeah, I'm available. Can I'm you available. Call me? Why don't you call me for that meeting? You know, yeah. that career. I want to be part of it. Yeah. And really, you're looking for a hustle. Yeah. So these are things where I was saying, I'm not just planning, but throw in any contingency. Mm. And as we say these days in economics, never plan money for contingency. Sadly, the government still plans a contingency of 3% in the budget. In the current planning, you say, if anything can go wrong, put it into the plan. Don't assume it. Yeah. Don't put a hanging budget there that if anything goes wrong, plan for it and say what can go wrong. Exchange rates can go up, mm -hmm. inflation can go. Do I have the cassava? Mm -hmm. If bread is not available. Yeah. Do you have the pancakes? Mm -hmm. Do you know how to make them? Mm -hmm. So we are saying to say plan, but with contingencies as you retire, mm -hmm. including falling back to your old age for peers. When children, you know, she's lucky that children make an appointment. There are those who don't want to hear the parent exist. Yeah. The only person left for this parent is his peers. Mm. To talk about the 1980s, you know, generals are going to retire mm -hmm. and interact once in a while with a number of them. What, is, what are they going to discuss? They will remind each other, remember the battle of Chibito? If I hadn't fired <laughs> that devil, that man would have killed you. 
and they are really reviving they're each other they're yeah. interacting and remembering days you remember the battle of masindi i was mm. part of it not on the front line mm. it just sucked me in mm. but i can imagine general sale with his commanders at that time mm-hmm. they want to have a chat mm-hmm. you'll even forget forget you haven't eaten your lunch right because that memory mm-hmm. will cheer you up so how are you planning for retirement Invest. besides the NSSF package. Right. I, I, I want to ask this question because some of us, yes, these days it's actually, uh, for lack of a better word, sexy to say at 40 I will retire. Yeah? yeah? That's what everyone is saying, right? By 45 I want to have uh, uh, sipping pina colada on a yacht in Dubai. <laughs> it's sexy these days. You'll hear people say that. And most people definitely are going to leave formal employment. So if you are in informal employment, how do you, uh, you know, get ready for that? But also, Mrs. Atim, um, there are also people, again in line with this conversation, that refuse to stay working. Because it is also now very sexy to be an entrepreneur. That is the language everywhere. I run a small startup. I have a startup. The startup culture is caught up, right? Everyone is starting something. So, you'll hear, you know, like your generation telling you, please stay working. So, how do you, what advice do you give to people who say, no, 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 me, I want to get out and do my own thing. What does staying in the job help me and how does it feed into the conversation of retirement okay thank you very much uh, what does staying the job help me a mm. lot mm. Yeah, okay. a lot it helps me a lot uh, going back to humanity and probably our creator all these things were made in such a way that any one stage of life is useful to you as a person and to the others whom you relate with. Right. So that stage of working, what we call in the being in the world of employment, is a stage you should never skip. Mm. It's a stage one should not shorten so much. Okay, you can shorten a bit for one circumstance or the other, but not too much. I would not encourage a twenty five year old, let alone thirty five, even forty five. She to Keep on focusing. At 40, I'm retiring. At 45, I'm retired. Not because me, myself, I retired at 60, but for reasons I'm going to give. And they, they should, if, depending on when you start this public public life, public work, let it be NGO, private work, government, name it. We are still living the self employment part, where a few do that. Um... It, that is a time, from the time when you are 20 something, that's a time for you to mature. Maturity, at the beginning, our headmaster mentioned about it. Mm. That some of us may are grown up, but we have not grown. Mm-hmm. I, I don't exactly remember the statement, but for some of that effect. Uh, we imagine we are grown up, but we are not grown. We are not mature. So that time, it have of. 30 years or 35 or at least 25 years, you are giving yourself time to mature and make maturity leads you to make better decisions. Be patient with yourself, plan with your spouse if you are a married person or whatever. Be patient and plan properly. That's one advantage. Yeah. Not rushing simply because. Uh, if, uh, what people are retiring, you know, retiring, you know, retirement is a style retirement. Mm-hmm. No, that's not an issue. But that's a sickness in Uganda. When something starts, everybody goes bad organ. Yes, mm. it's a bad organ. What effect? E- e- effect. Mm. So don't be part of that. Another uh, advantage of they are staying longer in the retirement is experience uh-huh. and developing social capital. Now, I personally. I would be, I would say I have a very wide social capital beyond just Uganda to the states and everywhere. Not that I have gone to live there, but it's because of the, my 37 years of work. For example, my first vehicle, I got it from a Briton. 
Mm-hmm. Not from Mr. Team. Because I was working. Not from Mr. Team. No, a Briton. Because mm. I was hey. working. <laughs> That's the time I was in a project in means of education. Wow. Yeah. If I had not retired, probably I would never drive. That's just an example. Wow. Yeah. So you gain that. Yeah? You strengthen your social capital. Uh, me personally, again, I give myself an example because I have worked for 37 years, exposed to so many girls. I'm a girl child, <laughs> and I have ended up in the world of girl children. Almost every girl who walks on the Kampara Road and whatever is like, Mama, Mama, Mama. Eh? Yeah, and, with, with uh, the work with Fawa. Now, mm. those who call me Mrs. Atim and uh -huh. Mabunga girls, uh -huh. and they also call me Mama, uh -huh. But those who call me Mama seriously are Mary Hill girls. They, mm. can, they don't call me Mrs. Atim. Because I went there when I was a bit more mature. Mm. But all of them are so excited. And they are, these are people who, who are now in the different levels mm. of work. And that's my social capital. If I taught for only 10 years, would I have it? Oh. That's what the example I'm giving. Right. So you get exposed to so many... And uh, my colleague here, doctor, also said, uh, you don't have to remain in one job. You may be get having a job of 500,000, move on, dare to move out. You are getting more colleagues, you are getting more exposed. And that is quite required. So that when you eventually retire, you have that capital, which is not the money part, but the social capital. Which is very yes. important. The other thing, yeah. the third aspect is knowledge. Uh, knowledge because as you are interacting with the people, you are learning, you are getting knowledge here, you are getting knowledge here, you are getting no. It's like a child who is born in a home and is a firstborn and has only two parents. That child will take longer to talk than one who is born who is a second or third born. We talk, we will talk faster because it's being exposed. So, even retirement, uh, I mean, a beautiful year retirement. So, I would say, uh, do not jump into a bad. Is it bad mm. uh, Just simply because we are talking all the time, it's good. It's a stage. A child who is born and is still just sitting, that's a simple jump and start walking. <laughs> so, <laughs> come on, follow the steps. Talk, and you will quickly, never regret. Quickly, Mrs. Atim, talk, then, talk about was, this one also. Mm. Uh, because uh, Kambona William is saying, mm -hmm. if one leaves for my employment because of the mandatory retirement age, but starts a business because of a need to continue earning an income is that retirement or simply a change one of jobs one? if you, i leave employment yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. because employment. also mm. we, 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 it looks like we uh, we think retirement is only mm. uh attached to age mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. uh is, is there another retirement say at the end of the day, whether you're in formal employment or not, okay. at this particular age, it's yes. your body that That's gives way and you have to retire. I've, <laughs> uh, I've got it. That was hello, Kambona William, if you are listening to me, I greet you. Mm. Praise God, you are alive. We will survive the COVID. Those are, those are part of my social capital. That's social capital. <laughs> <laughs> so at that point, now, age is, uh, the what body is weak. What by retirement? Okay, we are talking to NSSF servers mm. who are in a formal employment. But if you have to broaden, even when you are self-employed, you are still, you need that to plan. I'm sure my colleague, Dr. Atik, you talked about it. Uh, you also need to plan and be able to say, when my energy is lower, uh, I need to delegate, I need some people who will help me here, I need some people who will help. So you don't hold on and you are seeing yourself what and so on. Yeah. At the same time, if you retire for, from formal, if I go back to what William you say, from formal employment and I start something else which is bringing an, an, you are still working, it's fine. Yeah. Yeah. It's fine, but so long as you are sure that what you are now retiring to is going to sustain you. Uh, in my short life of eight years, when I'm actually dealing with retirement, retirement and mm. all that, I've experienced three different people mm -hmm. who have retired. One retired, and the parents were so much against it, but got insisted and retired. Mm -hmm. As I speak now, this person has gone back to for to for more work. Mm. The parent passed on and left her. Uh, he left him. 
a mad resources and mm. capital, but still he felt to he manage needed. it. Right. He still felt he needed it. He went back. Yeah. That means there's something which I learned through formal, yeah, formal employment. He couldn't manage the yes. the things. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, there's uh, there's another case where it was a, a couple who decided to, to retire. Both of them mm -hmm. thinking, okay, we can do this, but at the end of the day. The gentleman has gone back to formal work, yeah, and the lady is the one who has stayed what. And in the case of frustration of cap uh, of couples, for example, those who are in the mid year, like forty five, what and so on, one 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 spouse can start now that work and follow up that while the other one is still informal, yeah. And uh, I, we post me and my husband, we actually encourage uh, our children if one of you starts a uh, informal. Uh, business or something like that, investment type of work, and we, another one of you is in the normal formal employment. It's very healthy. Yeah. It's the two supplement. Right. And that's quite good. Require uh, require. I mean, what it does in marriage to right. supplement each, each other. other. So it is not bad to retire, but if you retire, you must make sure that you have a steady. You have a steady. Income. You talked about something uh, uh, which, which most importantly is daily cash flow. Yes. And I hope that you're getting, guys, I want you to send your questions. Okay. We have a couple of minutes to go, but I, I want to answer this quickly. Dr. Fred, um, Sarah Magola is asking, if I'm not good with side hustles, right? Can I just accumulate liquid money? Yes, I stay at my good job. My good job is paying me like a 20 milli. Yeah, I don't want to go and be stressed, quarrel with the people, have a heart attack while I'm on the job, miss meetings because I'm quarreling with one of my staff members. Can I just accumulate that and then do things like trust funds for my retirement? And, and the same, you can also educate us about investing in trust funds, unit trusts and uh, shares. Yes, thank you very much. Sarah, that's, um, okay, the 20 mil is not uh, bad, but you must be among the very rare ones, going by the survey we saw, <laughs> where most Ugandans are on Kawan mil. Kawan mil. So really, 20 is uh, a good one, but of it course. gives you an opportunity. I've seen people who get the 20 million and really in debt. Yeah. Could they get 20 million, now they think I must go and live in an apartment, so they pay rent of 2 million. Yeah. Then they go and buy a car, which you, you when a border border knocks your light, you need one million to repair that. You, light. you, you make a man kneel down on the tarmac you know, you, to you, forgive him. You, you, you drain <laughs> it away. That's true. So you end up, you want to have your 20 million. So out of the 20 million, by the way, by the time you get 20 million, 40% is what your is going to pick from you by way of taxes. So you're really left with about uh, 14, maybe 15 or less. So you want to begin looking into those things now. Plan for it well. And say, this is what I'll live on for now, yeah. these periods. There is a time when that 20 million will not be there. What will you be like? And that's why you get into the investment clubs. Mm. You get into other saving modalities. Mm -hmm. Now, there are many people who have gone into investment clubs. But remember, investment club, you just mobilize your resources. Now, what do you do with those resources? Is one problem NSSF here suffers with. In one month, they can raise 120 billion. Now, where do you put 120 billion in this economy of ours? Mm. So I've seen a number of investment clubs have had one option to put it into the government papers. That is one side. Uh, the other people have tried to buy land. Others have tried. So you also need that in that saving group, you have sober people who are thinking for the saving group. Mm. Otherwise, your investment club resources can be blown away. And yet, that is why you had put all your trust. Right. Or as we said before, they can invest it in an area that is not sustainable in future. It is open to so many risks. Foreign exchange risk, interest risk, shocks, flood or anything comes by. Walk and come. How yeah. secure is that investment? You have to have a conversation with the people who are managing the investment club funds. Mm -hmm. But let me also say one very important thing really that has affected people in retirement. We know that at that point, your body has given uh, way to yeah. many things, yeah. including fighting diseases. So there are a number of diseases that will come with age. They always do. Yeah. Now, 
the cost of treatment of those diseases has been gradually rising globally and nationally. Yeah. So will your income be sufficient? And this is a message to those who are getting the 20 million or 5 million or whatever in public spaces. Do not just plan your retirement as an individual. Also plan the, that the nation will be able to receive you in retirement. At that point. At that point. Mm. As she's saying that there will be a doctor. When you have retired in the mountains of I don't know where or the plains of I don't know where, have you tried to make sure in your government decision making and public sector investments, you have educated enough doctors, enough nurses, and invested adequately well in the health facilities at that level? I know people who steal money meant for health facilities. That day you retire there is when you realize that health center for could have saved you. Actually needed a doctor yeah. and a nurse, a cannula, a lab, and a theater. Mm -hmm. Because you are going to come with a basic thing in pneumonia. But there is no nurse to start with. Yeah. And then you remember, you grabbed the 20 million to do your own investment in that small area. And now you really need an ecosystem mm -hmm. to survive in. Right. And it's not there. Right. Or even if the health facility is there and it's expensive, it will drain your resources. We saw this in COVID. When even those who thought they have money and they can do anything, ICUs began draining their wealth away. Mm -hmm. So we are in this together and we shouldn't be planning like, you know, me, you guys, when I retire, I will leave you here and go to live in Australia. You're going to be here with us. Make sure there is an ambulance <laughs> that will help you. Make sure there will be a nurse to help you and the joint medical stores and the national medical stores that functions. That should be critical for your 20 million. Right. Otherwise, the 20 million, your relatives, friends, and in-laws will use it to bring tents to bury you before you spend even eight years in retirement. Mm. You want to multiply eight by another eight? Live on until your children say, Mommy, thank you very much for showing us that we can also live up to 98. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, the, <laughs> there's so much. Okay, uh, your questions quickly. Uh, Dr. Uh, Fred, um, someone was also asking about you know, I'm in my 40s, man. <sighs> like, there are things I can't do anymore. How do I catch up with time? I think the, the, the quick answer to that one, surely, there are things you can't do anymore. Flip that coin. Then you'll find so many things that you can still do mm -hmm. at 40. Mm -hmm. Period. There are still many things that you can do. Okay, um, uh, I have... At a, 60. Even at 60. Yes. I have a... a, a, a <laughs> Someone who didn't leave their name says, okay, when can someone who is currently working in public service and plans to retire early before the official retirement age tell that they can now retire from public service mm -hmm. and divert that attention elsewhere? Uh, also, a one Stephen, uh, Stephen, eh, sorry, Musabe Brian is asking, how can I make my retirement sustainable and how fast can I adopt to change from formal to informal sector areas. I find that requires more work. The, so we want to retire, but uh, the, the thought of working more in retirement is what scares us. Stevenson Sevume is saying, we also need to understand what we are retiring from and to what. Is there retirement anyway? Because <laughs> I have seen people who say they have retired, but continue engaging in other income activities. I think someone can help us uh, unpack this as well. Mm -hmm. And this one, specifically uh, for you, Mrs. Atim, mm -hmm. as, as we, 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 we close, specifically for teachers. Because, you know, every beginning of a new term, if it is not scientists, teachers, it is arts teachers. If it is not lecturers, it is... Kwagamba, education is always striking. Eh? If it is not the teachers, it is the students. Yeah? For, specifically for teachers, how do they, for lack of a better word, unchain themselves? You know, it's sad when you find your teacher and they are exactly what they were while you are in well, they were teaching you, right? And it is it is sad to watch. So, specifically for teachers, mm -hmm. what can they start doing 
to get ready to retire. Okay, thank you very much. I would like to go back to, I'm realizing that our audience to some extent may be misunderstanding what retirement is. is. Mm. So I would like to go back mm. to a primary seven definition. <laughs> The, the, oh, the, the, dictionary the, the dictionary definition. The dictionary definition. That time when I leave the formal work, the work, which, the day-to-day -day activities which I do for some days, and go back to go to my home and start working for myself. Mm. The difference between the formal work timing time and the retirement time. The formal work, um, working for some days. Yeah. Even when I was a teacher, as I've said, I was a teacher 37 years. Or whatever, or NGO, you are working for somebody else. Mm. And this somebody else is coming and say, thank you, even after 30 days, mm. by giving you the token, which we call a salary. Mm. After retirement, I'm still going to live. But the difference would be, whatever I touch, I handle my work on like my hand on like this the coin which comes on is mine mm. and there's no auditing mm. that's <laughs> my personal income through my personal uh, what uh, energy mm. i have all the time to do all what i want and that's why for example i'm saying i'm even starting off an association i wouldn't have had that time if i, w I was working for somebody else yeah. Because I have the time. Or if I was for working for somebody else, especially the government, they would say you are not allowed to start an NGO when you are working. By mm. the way, there is a, by, a bylaw there mm. and so on. So what we mean is, I mean, when I retire, whether I retire at 45 or 60 or at 80, I'm, I still have a, a life to lead. So I cannot retire and go on the coach and lie down and relax. That's not life. Yeah. Life means I have to be Active. You need to step productive. Yeah, so it is nothing like uh, I have seen even the retirees moving up and down and down. We have to live. Yeah, huh? yeah. Yeah, we have to <laughs> live. And in being active is when we are even much better. Mm -hmm. For example, people who see some of us who are what? They say, how, how are you managing it? It's because I'm active. Mm -hmm. If I wait and sat down on my veranda like the other person who told me, you I listen count to birds, birds because I'm a biologist, <laughs> I am sure by now would have died. Yeah. So activity in retirement is very normal. The difference is that whatever I'm doing is for myself. Right. And then another area which I would, I would like to clear out is this business of maybe I can rely on my children. I think we mentioned it. Mm. And this is the old way style, the old style. Educating your children, you are educating your child is not an investment. It's a responsibility. Mm -hmm. I think members need to understand that. Yeah. It's an obligation. It's a responsibility. At the end of the day, you don't sit down and say, I have educated my children, they will help me. Uh, our headmaster gave a very good example. But I just wanted to re-emphasize mm. that educating children is not an investment. We are talking of investment, something which will bring a coin into your pocket. Mm. Even the cash flow back to the idea of cash flow. Right. Then uh, another area of saying 5% goes to NSSF. I'm waiting for NSSF savings. That's when I'll start working. i doing whatever I want to do for my retirement. Uh, Mid-term, if I had the time, I actually don't support it also so much, but that's another day. <laughs> that's a conversation <laughs> that's, for another no, day. No, that's another day. Mm. But uh, when I get the 90, okay, 5% has gone, the 95%, I'm still able to do something out of that 90. Whether it is 1 million, 500,000, or 10 million, or whatever. Yeah. One example is, I talked about having a retirement home. As we are working together, my husband, Time where we already got somewhere to build, but we kept on, mm, and time was going. And I uh, actually threw the stone and told my husband that, do you think money will come written on house? <laughs> then that's when you start what? <laughs> but we, are, we are like that man. <laughs> so, yeah. So, younger gentlemen up there listening and, and ladies, don't imagine money will come written on land <laughs> money will come with uh, money will come in written on house or whatever <laughs> or or what those investment we are talking about mm. so you just have to plan 
to to have effective planning mm. and discipline i think that's the word i was looking for mm. discipline and say if i say 200,000 is going on my what i want to devote myself as as i retire make sure the 200 goes right not to be tempted to go and drink it right thank you well put about teachers. yes I'm teachers yes <laughs> quickly teachers <laughs> now about teachers you said what can teachers do yeah specifically teachers can do wonderful work in fact teaching is a noble job Teaching is the best profession. I'm sure mm. many of you who are listening may be saying, ah, it's talking because I'm a teacher. <laughs> it is not. Mm. Through my experience, uh, teaching is, a, is the, a, a, the, a career where you are dealing with human beings throughout your life. Right. You are relating and building the human capital you are talking about, the social capital. Mm. And teachers, uh, uh, the way we are brought up, our our curriculum, our what and so on, the way we relate with each other, we have in the schools, we relate with so many different professions in terms of subjects and all that. We have opportunities, so very wide opportunities of thinking wider and being able to do so many things. I think it goes to not uh, without saying much that teachers make very good politicians, for example. This is one of the most difficult jobs, by the way, mm. being a politician, very difficult. Mm. But the teacher can beat about the bush and manage to be a very <laughs> good, a good politician. <laughs> when you go into uh, all the other activities mm. out of teaching, teachers always become the best. You find that so-and-so is now managing, did you know so? he was a teacher and so on. So fellow teachers, we don't have to say, but now me with my chalk, where would I go? Uh, you may be getting the one million. It's fine, as I've already said. Uh, put aside the 200 or 100 and make sure you buy a brick or a... Be disciplined. A, a, yeah. yeah. A discipline is what matters. And look out, use the knowledge, whether you're a history teacher, a biology teacher, economics teacher, that knowledge will help you find a niche where you fit. Right. Looking for a niche is mm -hmm. what it calls. Because for me, probably I'm happy because I found my own niche. Right. Yeah. Right. Well put. Dr. Fred, I'll ask you to also uh, give your parting shot. Uh, the quick take aways as far as retirement is concerned. You're an economist. You, you, you see it in a different light. Um, what do we, uh, if we forget everything today, what do we take away? <laughs> uh, well. Just make sure you don't forget anything. Whatever I've said here is very critical. Mm. But if your memory is like when I was in primary one <laughs> and had some of those problems of forgetting things, you are going to grow because growing up, you're not going to have an option to eat. You're yeah. going to age. And when you age, you want to age gracefully and happily. Mm -hmm. uh, so whatever you are doing now will make, is, you're already taking decisions about that time. Right. As she's mentioned, Teaching is not what I do to earn a living, mm. but because it's a noble job. Yeah. So there I build networks, I build friendships, which are important for my retirement. Yes. Remember, there is a time I walk into that hospital, who knows who I will have taught. Maybe the manager of the hospital and I will get all the care that I need. Mm -hmm. But I'm also planning and see if that person is not there, what, what do I do for myself? Mm. So broadly spread out, diversify, early enough, don't wait for that moment to come. Um, be frugal and look at what else might happen, because anything can happen. Yeah. That's what we do economics about scarce resources. She said, don't say me, I earn one million. There are those who earn less and they have bill. And they are doing so well. So it's about scarce resources and making those choices. If you must buy that car, does it have to be a harrier? I've seen people buying cars before they build or before they even buy land. That's a choice. Yeah. But manage and juggle around those choices because the time is going to come when you will retire. And please, you can retire early. It's not about 60 years. It's not about 45 years. But please don't stretch it to 75. Mm. <laughs> Essentially. No, no, no. My studio audience, please give a big round of applause to our panelists here. And to those of you, I know this conversation cannot end. We can talk until the cows come home. But do one thing. Go to our inbox, right? Slide into our DM and ask away, all right? At NSSF UG, that is the Twitter handle, even on Facebook or Instagram.
talk to us use the hashtag a better life i want to take this back to our headmaster to wrap it up and uh, also speaking to if i am not my employer is not uh, saving my nssf what do i do can i start uh, saving as an individual now headmaster apollo thank you thank you brian thank you mrs atim thank you dr fred muhumuza I have been looking at the when I was com when we were coming up with this about six months ago. We said we don't need to bring this earlier this year, early in the year. Retirement is something people don't want to really, really hear. It's not a fancy thing to talk about. But I was looking at the attendance and I was looking at the interest, and I realized it is something that we need to have more and more often. Something came out interesting, and someone usually get someone to just do a bites and uh, pick out some notes. Retirement actually is not an age. Mm. retirement is an amount let's shift from thinking about retirement as an age now let me speak to Brian and take and <laughs> and think about retirement as an amount what is that amount that if you have accumulated you can now retire and when we say retire again it was been interesting that uh, someone told me retire can be uh, the tire the way you know the tire of the car mm -hmm. retire you are re giving yourselves new tires mm. not getting tired out of self service Retraining. but you are giving yourself new tires mm. for things that you want to do not to go and lie on the couch as, as uh, mr team really really said retirement is an amount and i have picked that out uh, <clears throat> one of the things you will need when you stop working for money and money starts working for you you can retire <laughs> when you stop working for money we're not saying stop coming to work but now when you're coming to work is not about have they paid us no they actually when you are in retirement you could be 40 but your money for january your money for for may finds money for mm -hmm. april mm -hmm. still on the account mm -hmm. not used and you they, they have an accident there <laughs> and they <laughs> they meet there and they say oh charlie what? Which, exactly <laughs> so that is when you are now in the ministry you are just in service that's why it is called service it is you are not working for survival but you are you are serving people thank you so much brian thank you so much doctor thank you so much miss head teacher <laughs> head teacher uh, yes this is headmaster here but head teacher <laughs> <laughs> probably i have to pick out as we wind out this, there is something I just wanted, want you to share with the audience. And uh, I'll start with you, Brian. Uh, in in a, less than a minute, you need to tell us what is it, because you're also a man of all trades. Mm. What is, how is all this fitting into your retirement? And what is your pick for your pointers, your take-homes? for Because you've been doing the asking of the questions. Yeah. would want to take you. Just pick your mind. And then I'll move on to the next person. You know, I've, I've learned through my business. So, so people ask me, what do you do? I'm a broadcaster. I'm now uh, selling content to TV stations. And for me, uh, I remember when I left NTV, people asked me, why did you leave TV? I said, Munak, how am I going to die on the TV? I, I, I found the TV there. I'll leave it, right? So I had to get out when I got the skill and I realized now I need to sell instead of being, you know, to work at the station. But uh, we had to come up with a partnership between me and, and a, a Nation Media Group. So I provide four shows to Nation Media Group. That's part of my retirement. And I'm saying uh, I will sell and the station buys so not just to ntv to you know multi-choice to uh, netflix to show max that's the plan in the future and so um I've, I've been able to do that but also something i learned uh from from a colleague for my own business the company has to save money the company, the business has to save money. It has to deploy money at any time of the day. Apart from servicing, you know, paying people the coin at the end of the month, is the company, you know, worth the value it speaks of? So I do that as an individual. I do that for my business. The company has savings. Yeah. And if we ever get to a point where we are unable to, to get new business, we are able to survive 
and we are not you know uh, i can do this for free no 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 <laughs> because uh those principles are there i'm also doing it for my self and my family we are saving as a family into the retirement the retirement we want is uh, we set a figure mr and mrs mrondo have set a figure that we want to live on when we 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 stop working when money works for us we've said that we, we we write it we have our cupboard in our bedroom and when we wake up we're like ah, it is 4 a.m let me go so because we are targeting that number and i'm glad you talked about the number yeah so when that comes you know we shall then know that we've arrived uh, an uncle of mine uh he's a medical doctor but at what point he was able to earn think what 45 million a month and he told me i've worked a lot now so he had to put investments that to, that gave him income of 45 million shillings per month and when he did that he left for more employment and now we'll consult he'll be like the dr freds who woke up at 3 a.m because australia is waking up uh so he's not he's doing that because yeah people call him he's not now saying i'm here he's in service he's in service he's in, in so, ministry so those are the things and i'm glad you've, you've highlighted them yeah thank you so much brian thank you very very much behind every woman behind every successful man there is always a woman but behind mrs mm -hmm. atim there is a gentleman mm -hmm. there's a gentleman and usually it is rare for us to just to, to highlight but there's a gentleman who 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 is behind mrs atim i'll i'll just ask my my crew to just <laughs> take a small <laughs> shot at at mr atim he's with us in the studio and he moves with mrs atim everywhere we have tried to, we have looked for her <laughs> he's been there and even today brought her on time from the village okay let's call it the village but in mukono here brought her on time and made sure she was prepared yeah. compared everything thank you so much mr mr atim thank you very they, very they much they are now eating life they together. are eating life together <laughs> thank you and finally i'll go to doctor doctor final parting shot and then for you you will also provide us with a book that you need you think people should read yes. that sh would change their life a difficult one but for headmaster you have to give an answer <laughs> or else you'll get dismissed from the school <laughs> i've seen people write books that they don't live to how to get rich and then they look for money to publish the book <laughs> and then they, you don't want to be in that situation <laughs> For us in our space the biggest thing is you know those things of company values you have to be those values yourself yeah so things like integrity professionalism trust that people can trust you your character really is what you want to live with because that will generate for you the resources that even when you want to leave a company the company will say no you can't just go like that can we sign a name on you so I, I left uh, the mainstream of government eight years ago and people were like how dare you leave the ministry of finance but surely between me and the minister of finance we don't know whether i left or i didn't leave we still interact <laughs> with each other we give each other advice but most important love and more money outside that ministry than outside because they trust you also because yeah. they trust but also you have now opened up yourself to more other employees so and good. employers and exposure to those networks and opportunities but i'm also trying to make sure I am not going to be a burden to my children mm -hmm. and I'm not going to leave them to be a burden to themselves. Right. So this is what she said investing in those children so that when they set off they should start much better than when I started and they will continue in their own life. So I'm making sure all these things add up and I will not be calling them to say hey, by the way <laughs> my yaka is finished <laughs> who among you is going to put my DSTV back. <laughs> no I want to tell them now the rooms where you were are bed and breakfast I am moving on comfortably. Is any one of you having problems? I can send you some top up. There's a WhatsApp group for survival for daddy. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> That's so, the title of the WhatsApp group. So I want one survival from daddy, but I want to prepare them that none of us at that point will be bothering the other. So, Even so. if you bring me the KFC to be because you chose and I'll first say but my health can no longer support that. <laughs> you know that's the kind of really the planning I want to have. Yeah. Good cool retirement and Uganda is where I really want to be. 
Nice. That's why I'm insisting everybody in the public space make sure those health facilities will work for me. They will yeah. be very critical. I will need them when I'm 95. Mm -hmm. Next to my home, mm -hmm. not to have to travel to India or I don't know to where. IHK, who cares? I want to be deep in the village. Right. And everything is in there. That's what I'm planning for really. Not just for myself, but for my peers. I don't want to be the only one now at 95. I want to be at 95 with my peers. Mulo yeah. will be like 82 or 83. Yeah. I don't know the age difference. But I want to walk in there with everybody. <laughs> that comfort and social network That's so good. is critical. Thank you. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Mr. Tim. Thank you, Doctor. We are, we are pressed of time and we need to end it at this point. This conversation can continue on and on and on. But we'll come back next, next, next month, same time, to talk about a, quite another subject. However, this uh, conversation can continue on our social media pages. We can uh, link, uh, you can get, uh, uh, contact the financial literacy team, call our call center, and we, we can handle all the other things off, offline. We thank you so much. It's, again, I want to extend my thanks to Brian, to Margaret, and to Fred. I, I am calling them like that so that people can know that I'm cool. And uh, <laughs> I know them. But uh, uh, behind the scenes, I'm also going to be getting notes from them. Uh, thank you. Thank you very, very much. Please uh, don't leave out the feedback. Give feedback is important to us, and there is a link in that that we have shared. Please share your feedback so that we can make this better. Otherwise, have a great, great evening. Thank you.